That is moost. Man, so you actually, and that's such a low spinning ball fly. Welcome back to the channel guys, Kerrick Gray here today at the Elves Club in Dubai, standing next to my good friend, Mac Boucher. How you doing, yes. Mac? Good to see, see you, man. Well. Yeah. So today we're gonna to be covering off a whole bunch of different shot shaping uh, techniques. We're gonna be hitting some trick shots and Mac himself is gonna be showing me exactly how to play some of the shots that he's become renowned for all over the interwebs. I'm excited and pumped to get into it, see if I can help improve my shot shaping as well. There's gonna be a lot of hidden information within these videos that you can use to implement into your game and make not only your practice a little bit more engaging, upgrade your performance and help lower your scores. If you wanna see more of Mac, head over to Mac Boucher Golf on Instagram. He's a Canadian tour professional and also a trick shot artist. So stay tuned, all these videos coming towards you. Lots of value, lots of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Alrighty, one of the most ominous, driver off the deck. So when would we use this, let's say, aside from trick shots? Yeah, when so- we're, When I mean, we're playing, why? For me, I've always liked it as a, a shot coming in on a par five or off the tee, um, kind of Laura Davies style, little chunk out of the grass, yeah. Um, just cause I can hit like a squeeze cut with it. Okay. So into a par five, I find that it lands pretty softly. Um, I mean, so does a three wood, but- So we're traditionally looking for a cut? I generally, yeah, it's a, it's a cut shot for sure. It gets me down on it. Um, again, it's something that I use as a tool as well because of how up I am with driver. Yeah. I get crazy up. So hitting a driver off the deck forces me to be a little bit more neutral with my angle of attack. Sure. Um, my main swing thought with it is choke down a little bit on the grip because of, uh, again, it's a little longer club. So I choke down a little bit and my swing thought is very much what I would do with a three wood. I try to keep it as simple as possible so like let's ball let's do this for the yep. for the angle here but like ball position yeah so ball position similar to where you would put it in the three wood is okay. kind of my my main thing i try to keep that consistent so just as a reference um ball still on the ground so we need some sort of descending angle of attack yep the only issue right is because when we've got such little loft you're turning well, this is set to nine degrees by the time that it has a couple of degrees of down on it or just one or as close to zero as possible, you're really with a bit of shaft lean, you're de-lofting into like seven or eight. Exactly, so I think what helps me with a lot is because I stand open with a lot of my shots, standing open allows me to get more side banded impact, which can get that ball up. People yeah. always wonder how you get the driver off deck so high, and I think a lot of it is attributed to the that open stance so I can get that side bend. So what, what loft you got there? So this is a seven and a half, nine degrees set to seven and a half. Okay. Um, and I mean, for me, open my stance up and then at impact, I'm trying to feel that that arm tucked. It's yeah. kind of a big thing for me. Really? Oh, yeah, okay. it's a, if I look at my swings with driver off deck, it's like a ton of side bend. Ton of side bend. A ton of side bend. Yeah, so we're quite different in that because I really don't have much at all. Right. I used to have a lot of arm overrun, not much turn. Would you um, say you hit it pretty low with driver off deck normally? Is it a pretty? Uh, no, because my general flight's a bit of cut. Yeah, so and you hit it pretty high with the irons. Yeah, too, so. my path's usually across, I just, I think, just for a long period of time, I just developed good hands to manipulate it. Right. Uh, but generally, my swing direction would drive is quite far left. Right. So it actually kind of helps. So for sure. I'll go at the checkered flag here. Yep. Um, so you grip down a little bit. I grip down a little bit, back. yeah. Yeah, okay. So I try and play it a little bit different. Okay. What I try and do is I move it just a whisker further back from where I would normally further have back. driver. Okay, interesting. Uh, yeah, from, from driver. So probably a little bit further forward than where you would have a three wood. Yeah. I grip it neutral, but then as I hit it, I with the, the ball position a little bit further forward, that actually increases the amount of leftward swing direction. It helps okay. me get that path right. a little bit left. So I generally do cut it unless I double cross it, but let's see how we go here. That beauty. So you can see it's quite high. Yeah, that, that's, that's, that is quite high. The, the effect of that, you'll notice how that big rise, that's uncontrollable though. Yeah, so. and, and I think for me, um, it's start line for me that if I can start it right enough, so that's another reason why I feel like I open up my stance. By setting myself right or open, it gives me room to clear everything, start it right and fade it back. So my big thing, again, it's very similar to when I hit like a slinger shot, is I need to have a start line. So yeah. I, I really focus on, like let's say if I was peeling one to the kind of checkered flag, that kind of sand line is kind of my start line. That's what I'm thinking. Mm. So I'm really trying to start it there, 
maintain my face pretty square and have it leak to the check. And take flag. it off there. Yeah. So how about you hit one? I'm going to stand behind. I'm going to watch. And then yep. what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift what I do to be a little bit more like you. See if we can straighten up my flight. Yeah. Right? A little choked up. Yeah, so that's nice and open, yeah. Yeah, I stand super open. And then again, trying to feel that side bend. That is moosed. Man. So you actually... And that's such a low spinning ball flight. Yeah, so that, that's flight. another thing is I find that my driver up deck, generally I can still get it out there because as I said, my attack angle is so up with driver hmm. that even when I try to stand open and swing down on it, I think I'm actually still up, which is, again, I can, my miss with it is a little bit chunked because of that club traveling. What I think is down is actually fractionally probably neutral. Across, yeah. So I sometimes will bottom out that club yeah. before the ball, which is why I have to choke down on it. Okay. So I, I, essentially I was just setting up two neutral to hit, right? Yeah, I think for, that's what I find most people, they, they don't give themselves enough room to clear. And I think generally speaking, if you can, I mean, the first one that you hit there was awesome, just peeled right too much because I think no room for that club to clear. So I'm going to go aim at the, I don't know, between these flags and try and finish it off. Yeah, yeah. What I'll do is I'll grip it down slightly, right? Yeah, open the stance and start it right of your target, or left of your target, sorry. Grip it down. Yeah, beauty. Yeah, a little bit more spin than yours, but that felt so much better off the face. Yeah, so it yeah. still had a, 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 and a little bit of rise in. Probably just a little bit more down, which is what I wish I could do. I wish mm. I could have a little bit more of that downward attack angle, which I think would be a little bit more consistent with the strike. Mm. But for me, lower spin, because I think I am super neutral, so I still can maintain a low low spinning driver off deck, Yeah, even though it's uh, not teed up. So, so it's, it's a fun shot to play. It's obviously something that you don't want to try and do all the time. No. But uh, within reason, something that is handy for uh, sure. relative to the shot that you face without on course. Yeah, exactly. exactly.